All right, you guys. So we're here with Emily. And Emily, will you just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you are, and what you've been doing? Yeah, um, so I'm in Galveston, Texas right now, which is like a little beach town, um, just getting some ocean views with my family. Um, and normally I'm in Dallas, Texas. So yeah, I miss California a lot. Um, in quarantine, I've just kind of been uh, hanging at home, um, painting some stuff, doing a lot of art, um, as well as reading. I started reading the Bible chronologically, which has been super cool. Um, I'm learning a little bit of French, which is fun. And wow. then I totally like redecorated my room because I was like, well, I'm going to be here for a while. So <laughs> might as well make it look cute. So, yeah. You've been doing a lot. Wow. Yeah. Learning a new language. That is a really great <laughs> thing to add to your list. I love it. Okay. I like way. <laughs> Where are you in school right now? Like what year are you? What's your major? Yeah, so I'm a senior right now. It's my last semester will be this coming fall. Um, I'm studying early childhood and like a concentration on intervention. So more of the child advocacy side. Okay, cool. Sweet. So what do you anticipate next year looking like for you? Um, Lord willing, <laughs> it's just with everything. I want to go into child life in the hospital yeah, or like the nonprofit, but I'm also looking at like more short term, maybe teaching English abroad or um, nannying abroad, anything that's like kind of overseas just for a bit before <laughs> I go back to school and like take all the child life courses. I kind of want to take a break and um, get to teach a little bit or do yeah. something in a different country. So That's awesome. All right, tell us in this season, what's been like, what's been good, what's been hard about this season for you? Um, so what's been good is definitely like having a lot of time with family. I'm normally not in the same place for more than a couple of weeks. So that's been super strange, but it's also been really filling. Um, and just time for rest and time for catching up with people and building a different kind of community just um, seeing like what this will look like because you know things could stay this way things could change so it's cool to just like build something where you are at and not focus on like what it was but like mm -hmm. focusing on the now and it's been hard I have a chronic illness that's been flaring up so I've been pretty sick and just having to like struggle with that and just find new doctors but also like not having a lot of doctors open because no one's taking patients so just, trying to figure out things with not a lot of yeah. something good because I have been able to be cared for a lot more than I would at school where I'm like focusing on work and classes and friends and events and all that stuff where I'm not focusing a lot on my health. So it's been kind of like a time to hone in on that and like really work on it. But it's also been a time where I'm thinking more about it and like having to sit in the pain. So that's yeah. been difficult, but it's also been, really cool just like seeking the Lord in that right I feel like you have such a positive like joy about you you're really positive when you talk about things like this like how do you stay positive and all that um I mean it's all God like it's not me um but just knowing that there is that hope in Christ like this is just like it's our temporary home so knowing that whatever we're going through, like there is joy ahead. And so like knowing that there's joy ahead gives me a reason to be joyful now. Yeah. So. Dang girl. That's really encouraging to hear. What do you feel Thank like you. if anything specifically like God's just been teaching you in this season? Yeah. Um, I think God's been teaching me a lot, a lot about trust. Um, just cause I had kind of everything planned out for the summer and it seemed like so on point for like it was just like made for me I was like oh my gosh this is it like I was so pumped and then like everything canceled and it wasn't just my stuff like so it wasn't like oh my gosh woe is me like it's only happening to me mm -hmm. but it was cool because at first I was like did I really hear the Lord's voice in this like am I misinterpreting like what he's telling me to do like I thought this was for me and now like everything's changed like was I really listening and then talking through that with a lot of people, just realizing like he did have me go that route so I could end up where I am now mm -hmm. and just trusting him. Like even though he did close that door, like I still had to walk through it 
to get here to like lead virtual small groups and you know do different things at home and spend time with family focus on health like none of that would have been possible without going through that first door and just the idea of like having this virtual small group has been so cool because if everything was still working like as it should um, in person I would have been in Spain not having this community because there wouldn't be the like online stuff everyone would be in person and I'd still be over there like not connecting so it's been really cool and like really sweet to have this so yeah I think trust has been like the biggest thing and just contentment because like, like I said like I'm not normally anywhere for more than like two weeks and so <laughs> having to sit and be like okay this I am I f like physically can't go anywhere right now so just sitting and enjoying where I'm at has been really cool and like definitely a learning process that's awesome dude I love you sharing that that's so encouraging to hear I feel like that's so good and a good reminder just to be focusing on those things when it's so easy to focus on what you don't have so thank you for that um we've been studying through Jude any thoughts that you've had on Judah as we've studied through that? Anything that stuck out to you? Yeah, there's been quite a bit, even though it's such a short book. Like, at first I was like, Jude, like, <laughs> I forgot that was in the Bible. <laughs> like, you hear it, but you kind of just feel like Jude and Revelation. Um, so it's been really cool. I was telling our small group, like, I love when people are blunt and like straight up with me. I love when they're just like, tell it how it is. Right. So it's cool. Jude's like, all right, short and sweet. We're going to talk about it. And, um, we're going to call you out in the process, which is cool. Cause I feel like right now, like in this day and age, and even back then, I'm sure it's so easy to talk about the gospel and like all the short and sweet, like butterflies and rainbows about it like oh god loves you god's so good and no one really talks about like his wrath and like fearing god mm. like healthily yeah. and just sitting in sin and like talking about your sin and i feel like jude really calls that out and he's like hey it's not just his love and goodness and grace like there's wrath and we should be separated from god is the reality and like we sh we're destined for help but like christ interceded for us and so talking about those hard things and actually sitting and like confessing your sins together, I feel like that's something I don't do a lot and it's something I should be doing. So I've been really encouraged by that because it's not as isolating as you think when you do confess your sins. It opens this like world of community because you're like, whoa, like everyone's struggling with this or like everyone has this issue that they've been dealing with, but now we get to like do it together and keep each other accountable. So I think it's taught me like accountability and just like calling things out and like, calling them into light. Dude, you brought up so many good points. I love that idea. Just like you're not isolated in your sin. Like when you bring that yeah. to light, like just there's a community around you. That's a really great insight. And yes, I love the same things that you do about just Jude being so to the point, so direct. <laughs> He's just like, okay, here's what you guys got to know. I'm like, that's the kind of book I need. Just get, get to it. Yeah. That's awesome, Emily. Thank you so much for just hanging out with us a little bit and telling us more about your update on your life and what you're doing and what you've been learning. I feel just, yeah, super excited to hear about that. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right, we'll see you soon, hopefully. Sounds good. Hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. All right, girl. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. Bye. What's up, Grove Young Adults? Hey, uh, man, just excited to get into the third week of Jude. Um, I got to be honest, I've, I've really enjoyed getting into this book and just going verse to verse and, and, and studying scripture together. So I hope it has been encouraging for you. Um, I know that we are we're still in shelter in place, which is crazy and weird. And really hard and I think everyone kind of feels it in a different uh, at a different time um, and so I think this particular week for me has been um, a little bit harder it's been one of those where just kind of feels a little bit harder and so um, one thing that was neat though we're up here like I said Northern California and Chico with Emily's family right now um, we saw there was there's actually it's okay to go to some restaurants now here in Butte County so I know every county is different I know not Riverside County um, or LA County, but but we're for us a little bit of hope to see someone. Oh, there's someone at a restaurant. This is crazy. So maybe that encourages you. Maybe uh, maybe you're bummed, but hopefully it kind of gives you a little bit of hope that 
um, man, Lord willing, we're moving toward towards something normal. Um, so like I mentioned in uh, Instagram and in our email, very excited to have DA Horton with us next week. And if you just know him as maybe a guest speaker at The Grove or um, someone who is a professor at CBU, um, man, he, he's actually, he's been around for a while um, in, in, the, in the world of just, um, man, preaching and, and, and Christian conferences. And, and he is a very gifted writer, communicator, and um, man, has done some great work in his PhD. He has recently written a book called Intentional. Um, just really, really great work. So uh, I love this man. I'm super thankful for him. And he, like I said, has spoken at the Send Conference before and um, all a bunch of different churches. And we're just really thankful. So this is a, this is a gift for us to have Dee Horton with us next week. For now, we're going to finish Jude. And so, you know, three weeks, we get, it kind of feels good to finish the whole book of the Bible, even though it's not even two chapters, it's just one chapter, one book. Um, but we're going to finish uh, starting in verse 17. And so I'm going to start with the, the passage, we're going to finish the passage, and then we're just going to go right through this. So um, if you have your Bibles or phones or need to pause, um, get, get the word out, and we're going to start in verse 17. It says this, Jude verse 17. But you must remember, beloved, right, speaking to the Christians, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions, worldly people devoid of the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others, show mercy with fear, hating even, even the garment stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. So we end this book with a call to persevere. Now, it's, it's helpful. I'm going to break this up into three points. And, and just to, to let you know, um, a lot of times every week, Emily and I are, you know, we're studying this passage or we're studying the topic and um, we're doing some research. We're looking at scripture. We're looking at commentaries. Um, we're looking at different resources, different pastors, different leaders. You know, what is the text saying? And so well, um, just know, and it's kind of neat for, for me to share, like, uh, oftentimes um, we're doing a lot of that studying together and so it's cool to know that even Emily's not with me today uh, she's with the kiddos it's been it's been one of those long weeks uh, man she's also been really encouraging in this passage as we've prayed through it and studied it as well so very thankful for my wife shout out to Emily for that and um, just wanted to, to share that as well so she she actually helped with this as well and kind of set the the tone for as we look at this passage um, Man, there's some really helpful three points. So just to give those to you now to kind of set up where we're headed. Um, we're going to remember the apostles' predictions. Okay, so that's their first point. We need to remember. Okay, it's clear that we need to be able to look and say, Apostles, you predicted this for us. To be mature, one of the things that separates us, to be a mature believer, is that we're able to remember what is in Scripture, what the apostles predicted, what Jesus has done, right? Remember what God has done through His kingdom, through His story, through His character, so that we can be mature and wise moving forward. So point number one, remember the apostles' predictions. Point number two, remember what it means to be a follower of Jesus, right? We need to have a vision for this. And then point number three, remember the mission. It's not our mission, it's God's mission. So that's where we're headed today. Remember the apostles' predictions, remember what it means to be a follower of Jesus, remember the mission, okay? So first point is remember the apostles' predictions. 
he says in this passage, verse 17, right? He says, remember the predictions of the apostles. Uh, verse 18, they said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers, guaranteed to you. We know in James, he promises us trials. And now right here in Jude, hey, there's going to be scoffers. We should not be surprised by that. When believers are surprised by things that are told to us in Scripture, we got to move from that place of ignorance, that place of immaturity, toward maturity, so that we can have that in our mind. And so know that there will be scoffers. There will be worldly people who are going to cause division. And we're sinners, so part of this is even in us. Part of us is worldly. Part of us is tempted by the flesh. And so we also self-evaluate and make sure, Lord, I want to be... I, I want to move toward Christ-likeness so that I am away from worldly thinking and I'm away from the temptations of the flesh. Um, we got to be attentive and we got to know the real thing. I don't know if any of you have seen this movie. Um, catch me if you can, Leonardo DiCaprio. Okay, this movie came out legendary. We got con artist and we got heist combined into one. I mean, this dude is just legendary what he accomplished from the sort of like evil like bad guy standpoint but we're just humans are always impressed right with um the ability to con the ability to pull something off with people chasing you uh right with the good guys chasing you and so this movie you know when it came out everyone's just like oh so good and one of the things that's so fascinating about the the, the character that uh leo plays is that this dude was so good at at, at faking checks and money, they said it was practically the real thing. And so at the very end of the movie, they end up basically wanting to hire him on um, to the feds so that he is the guy who identifies what is real money and what is fake money. Because he was the expert at identifying what was the real thing, what was fake. He was, he was the guy because he produced the most legitimate fake checks and money to ever be made and so of course this is the guy who can distinguish between what is real and what is fake as believers listen as believers we got to know what is the real thing so that we can identify what is the fake thing what is the fake gospel what is not true we got to be able to to identify that so be attentive right when you study the real thing we're going to be better at studying the false thing so we got to read our Bible. Now, of course, we need to think of Jesus's life, right? We, we need to, um, when we get to, we, get, we now get to point number two, right? This kind of transition us, know the real thing. Uh, point number two is remember what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Remember what it means to, to follow Jesus. And, and, and let's just, what is his life? Like, I want and I want you to have like like things like pop into your mind when you start thinking of Jesus. I think sometimes we kind of, just when we think of Jesus, when we go to pray to Jesus, you know, our mind doesn't necessarily fill up as full as it should with who is Jesus and his story and his life. Like think real quick to he, like his temptation all the way back to right, he gets baptized and he goes into the wilderness and how he sh like just with such strength, sure he's God, but he's also human. Remember that. He's also fully human. And just remember how he fought Satan. He fought the devil to not sin and did not sin. Faced with, with you know, he's, he's out there 40 days and just he's, he's been tempted with food and with water, right? So his temptation. Um, who he chooses. The kind of people that Jesus chooses to be his disciples, to be his followers. Fascinating. Um, the Beatitudes, like what he teaches when he teaches the description of who a believer, a Christ follower is. Matthew 5, fascinating. Uh, what the, his teaching on loving your enemies, his teaching on not judging others, that that's up to God the Father, and so he frees us up from having to judge others. We don't need to judge others. What it means to know someone in Matthew 7, he says, depart from me, for I never knew you. People who were doing many mighty works in the name of Jesus, but says, hey, but I didn't know you. You can do all of these Christian things that look like Christian, but you, you didn't know me. So he defines, he helps us understand what it means to know someone, how he calms storms, how he casts out demons, heals blind men, he heals men who are paralyzed, how he predicts his death and resurrection. Like, 
This is Jesus. He predicts that. Um, think about this, how he fulfills the law, how he uh, defines God's family, what it means to be adopted and be a part of God's family. And he casts vision, right, for what it means to produce fruit in your life, fruit of the Spirit. Uh, he teaches parable after parable. He asks so many questions. He, he's leading in communicating by just asking questions. Think about that. Um, he doesn't have to have the final word. Um, he, he can release that. He's free from needing to have the final word. Um, he's rejected in his hometown, but does it with humility. He walks on water. It's insane. It's, it, he's okay to be inconvenienced, stopped by the touch of a woman who has been sick for years and years. He sees the unseeable, the unnoticeable. Uh, he, man, he feeds thousands with seven loads of bread and three fish. Uh, he predicts his death and resurrection, right? He, um, he maps out that you have to die to yourself to live for Christ. And, 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 and then he, he keeps going, right? He, he guarantees that it will be hard when you have a lot of money, right? We kind of have this thought. So he's like, if I just had this amount, if I just had this amount, every time you get that number, you're going to want more. And so he talks about this in the rich young ruler. Um, he says, look, uh, it's going to be hard um, when, when you get asked to pay taxes, but just pay your taxes. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Don't complain about it. Don't argue it. Just do it. Um, he talks about this idea of, um, man, actually looking at his life and seeing he actually died. He predicted it. He actually died. And then he actually resurrected and so he predicted it, but then it actually happened. And so as you kind of look at this, you look at all of these crazy things that Jesus did when, you know, he goes in the temple and he flips tables and he has this righteous anger for the house of the Lord. I mean, you just, I want us to have all of these things in our mind, in our heart, when we think about Jesus, when we go to pray to Jesus. Um, because we got we to gotta be in his word. Um, when we're in his word, when we study his life, it helps us get to know him. And, and it's really difficult. You can't follow someone that you can't find. If you don't know where Jesus is, if you don't know who to look for, how do you follow him? And so we need to know who he is. We need to remember what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And to be a follower of Jesus, we kind of got to know who Jesus is and where to find him. We find him in his word, right? We find who he is, John 1, 1 in his scriptures, in his word. And so it's so helpful to know how he related to other people, the prophecy that he fulfilled, um, the miracles that he did, the signs that he gave us, the righteous anger that he had, the humility and the meekness. He predicted his death and resurrection and it happened. And so when we have this healthy, high view of Christ, um, we can more healthily follow him. But we can't follow him if we can't find him. And so we got to remember what it means to follow Jesus and know that this, this, right, is what Jude is saying is the medicine. It's the antidote, right, to false teachers. When you have false teachers and this, this other voice coming at you, you need to be able to have that, me that medicine, right, the, the answer the, to know what it means to follow Jesus. And so hey, there's this part uh, where it talks about praying in the Holy Spirit. And maybe some of us are like, of course, got to pray in the Holy Spirit. But why he says that is that he's talking and making a distinction between us praying in the Holy Spirit, which is us coming in line with his mission versus us praying about our own agenda. So guilty of this. I look at my prayer life. I love Pastor Tom Lance talking about this. And he talks about, said this before, the, the movement for him from immaturity to maturity when he began to see what he prayed about. Am I praying about my agenda or am I, man, am I praying Literally, am I praying the mission of God? Am I praying that? Am I praying with the Holy Spirit? What would the Holy Spirit be praying? What was Christ praying? I want to pray that prayer. That's what I want to pray. I want to pray that prayer. Not, oh, Lord, you know. And it's, a, it's not bad to pray for your life. And of course, to, to pray for certain things, absolutely. Pray for freedom from, um, from sin habits, from bondage. Um, pray for 
pray for healing in, in, in this, the lives of loved ones who are sick, people that you know, absolutely pray for these things. Uh, I think I get convicted when um, there, are, there are selfish things in my life that I'm praying about. Um, and I know that they're selfish and I know that they're about my agenda. And so the more that I move toward praying for the lost, for people in my family, my neighbors that on the street that I live, people around me, people far away, um, people who, who are unreached, people groups around the world, the more my heart goes there, the more my prayer life changes. And I tell you what, the less I worry about my own specific circumstances, because I'm getting closer to being a part of God's story. And so this is, this is helpful for us, um, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Consider what God has done for you, for, for all people. Um, man, so we need to, as we remember what it means to follow Jesus, there's this um, idea, right, in, in this verse, in this passage, waiting for the mercy of the Lord Jesus. And so this is a beautiful thing. Mercy, grace are different. Different mercy, right, is that God withholds, withholds the judgment that we deserve. Uh, because he died and took on uh, all of the wrath for all of our sins, he allows mercy on us. He gives us this mercy. And so have, he says, I'm going to give you mercy. Have mercy on those who doubt. Uh, because if you even look at spiritual gifts, faith is a spiritual gift. Um, some people are much slower to get there. That doesn't mean they don't believe. But that wasn't necessarily something that is a spiritual gift for them. And so that's what's beautiful about the body of Christ is that there are some in the body that have a spiritual gift of faith. And we can lean on their confidence. We can lean on their faith sometimes in the midst of doubt. And so we need to have mercy on those who doubt because when we have judgment taking the place of God, we're not, we're not called to be judging them. So when they're struggling and having doubt and they say, look, Man, if, if maybe that is a spiritual gift for us of faith, and we come alongside those brothers and sisters in Christ and we say, hey, let me encourage you in this. And we come alongside them and we meet them where they're at, but not judge. Um, so that's helpful for us as well. Have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the, pot, out of the fire. Tell people about Jesus, uh, the fire of judgment, eternal judgment of hell. Tell them about, tell them about Jesus. Tell them about the gospel that let them know, right, that we are sinners. We're, we're called to, to obey. We don't change their hearts, but we're, we're called to obey in sharing that, the good news with them, right? That, that Jesus, um, that, that he came and saved, saved everything, that, that Jesus rules and reigns over all of life. Um, this is the good news for us, that even though, right, that we only deserve hell for eternity and have a sin bill that, that requires payment because our sins separate us, from a holy, perfect God that, man, Jesus predicted it, died and resurrected, offers us this saving relationship and says, believe and follow me. This is who I am. Look, we, we just mentioned his life a little bit. Follow me. Obey that. Follow me. And so, um, and so Jude encourages us in this and says it's required, there's a, there's a love, it requires a love of people, that we love God's people, his children, and sometimes that can, be, that can be very difficult. Now, be careful. Hate the sin, not the sinner, right? Have mercy on the sinner, right? We've got to have mercy on the sinner. Now, real quick, this is what this does not mean. Um, and so it's helpful to understand what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Sometimes when you describe what it doesn't mean, right? So it doesn't mean um, argue with people so that you're right. Hey, I'm right. And you get in an argument. Unhelpful. That's going to cause division, not unity. It's going to cause division, not unity. So arguing with people, let me make sure you hear it, just to say, hey, I'm right, isn't helpful. Sit on that for a little bit. Um, then we got live out your own agenda. So I talked about this earlier. That's not what it means to follow Jesus, to live out your own agenda, your own plan, um, your, own, your own personal mission. It doesn't mean pay attention to your feelings only. I'm not saying... Don't pay attention to feelings. I'm not saying ignore your feelings. I'm not saying push your feelings down. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that Proverbs talk about how the heart is deceitful. And we need to be careful about only, only living our lives and, and, and making decisions 
with just our emotions, with just our feelings. We've got to be careful about that because truth, right, truth is here and our emotions can be all over the place. And so what is true? We need to know that. Put anything um, above God's truth is not what this means. We're not going to put things above God's truth. Um, the, the Lord, if we believe he is God, if we believe scripture is true, then this is what we hold as our guide for life. This is what we hold as the ultimate truth, okay? So that's where we are. And here's the last thing of what this does not mean. Um, it does not mean you're just following your own personal dreams. Now, is it bad to have personal dreams? No, that's what I'm, I'm not saying that. But if our personal dreams have no connection, have no overlap, and we are not okay surrendering them to God, then we need to do some processing in our heart, in our mind, because we were created by God. And so if we have this dream that doesn't align with His mission and really is all about us, and we could disguise it, we can disguise it with sprinkling some Jesus on it, but when we really get down to it, it's about us and we're the subject of that dream, then you got to be real careful. You got to make sure we switch the subject of who our dreams are about. They got to ultimately come down to Jesus is the subject of our dreams. The last point is this. Remember the mission. We got remember the apostles predictions. Don't be surprised. Remember what it means to be a follower of Jesus and remember the mission. You can only participate in the mission of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, not your willpower. Um, God, right, who is able to keep you from stumbling. He is the resource. He is where we will get that sustenance, where we, get, where we will get that power, where we will get everything we need to be a part of the mission. And so that's where we end with Jude. Um, man, I hope this, this last little piece of Jude was encouraging to you. Uh, it's pretty simple, and I think there's a lot to discuss here. So encouraged by, um, man, just Grove Young Adults, just so encouraged by your guys' willingness to still log into a Zoom and um, have conversations with each other, listen to this message. And Lord, uh, uh, my prayer, Lord, is just that um, we remain unified and that we can truly be growing because we're in His Word and we want to build each other up and we want to continue to move forward in being a part of God's story and completing His mission. So we're going to depend on the power of the Holy Spirit to do that. Praying for you guys. Hope you have a good week.